Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K18 Smile League Mode. My name is Pete and today we complete another part of the first season with our expansion team, the Louisville Legionnaires. Last time we actually managed to get our first win and we're up to a 5-18 record now, which still puts us safely in last place of the Eastern Conference, but things are slowly improving. Now we start today's episode off with a game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. After the nail-biter we had in Oklahoma City last time, I decided to welcome them in Louisville myself and played the entire game. At halftime, things were still relatively close. We shot the ball much better, but Russell Westbrook kept his team in the game. That, however, would change in the second half, where Bryce Johnson absolutely exploded, and so after 48 minutes, we blow out the Thunder 109 to 81. And Bryce Johnson, the only guy I really want to talk about here, 31 points and 8 rebounds, a phenomenal performance, and good enough to set the franchise record for points scored in a single game. By the way, one of the big reasons for the Thunder's loss, probably the performance of Paul George in this one. He pretty much kept going where he left off last time, and Moharkle is once again doing an incredible job on defense, which in the end caused George to be pretty passive on offense. Now, despite what I said earlier, two more guys I quickly want to mention. First of all, Joe Chi, who played a good chunk of minutes in garbage time, and who was able to put up 8 points and 6 rebounds in just 10 minutes of action. The other one, Davis Bertans, who didn't really score well but grabbed 9 rebounds, and who also for some reason decided to step up his defense today. Here we can see him block Russell Westbrook's layup attempt, and here he is chasing down Terrence Ferguson for his second of 3 blocks in this game. So, one game down, quite a few more to go, and up next we match up with the Milwaukee Bucks. And despite having a small lead in the first half, we don't manage to hold on to that, and instead the Bucks come back in half number 2 and beat us by 5 points. No one on the roster really had a performance worth mentioning, so let's simply continue with the next one, a game against the Memphis Grizzlies. And I have to admit I was itching to jump into this one, but ultimately I decided to let the CPU play things out, and so we lost by one point. Harkless with 19 and 6, definitely our best player in this one, but Ulysses, Hernan Gomez, Davis and Farrell all in double digits as well. Now in the last episode we sent this guy right here, Sheldon Mack, down to the G League. In the G League, he will now hopefully get himself some much needed playing time, while we earn ourselves an open spot in the rotation. Now technically, we still have 15 players under contract, so we can't just sign any free agent we want, but we can sign someone who qualifies for a two-way contract. Using those two-way contracts, we can sign up to two more players to the roster, effectively having 17 players under contract. Those with a two-way contract can only stay with the team for 45 days, however, and will then have to play the remainder of the season in the G League. Still, given our current injury situation, we could use a bit more help, and I actually have something very specific already in mind. Now, you cannot just go and offer a two-way contract to anyone. Veterans, like Brandon Bassier for example, are not eligible for one, as only players with three or fewer years of NBA service are eligible. Now, that would obviously point towards adding more youth to the team, but I'm actually trying to add a veteran this time. I already received a few comments about this, and yes, I think it is somewhat unrealistic to have a roster full of young guys, with not a single player on the team to mentor them. Today, we are going to change that, and the guy who will help us do that is Marcelo Huertas. Huertas is already 34 years old, but he played the majority of his career in Europe. That means he spent only two years of his career in the NBA, and is therefore still eligible for a two-way contract. Now, despite his rating, I don't really plan on playing him that much. He is simply a piece to keep this playthrough realistic, so he is brought in as a mentor for the young guys, most importantly our point guards Tyler Eulis and Yogi Ferrell. So, let's sign the guy and grab ourselves a player who can reliably run the point guard, while also still playing some pretty good defense. And who knows, maybe against some of the slower point guards in the league, who enters will actually see some minutes. Now, as you can see here, after joining the team, Huertas is assigned to the G League by default. But we already have one guy down there and a free spot in the rotation, so let's call Huertas up. By the way, we now also have the option to sign him for the remainder of the season, meaning he would get a real contract with a full roster spot, but of course, if we wanted to do that, we would have to kick someone else off the roster first, as we now have 16 players on the contract. Now, one more thing before we get back into the action, I made some changes to our rotations, of course, with the recent performances of our players in mind. The biggest change, effective immediately, starting at the power forward, Bryce Johnson. Now, I hope this doesn't leave our second unit too depleted when it comes to scoring options, but then again, if it doesn't work out, we can simply switch back to Hernan Gomez. 
Harkless received another minutes increase, now playing 32 a game, and also now a full, albeit small part of the rotation, Joe Chi. With two four minute stretches off the bench, he should now play around 8 minutes per game, and I'm very open to increase that even further if he shows some production for us. Now though I think it's time for our next game, and for the 27th matchup of the regular season, we face the Washington Wizards. And this one was pretty much over before it began, and even a good fourth quarter couldn't change anything about that, and so, despite a nice 20.10 rebound double-double by Josh Richardson, we lose to the Wizards, 114-104. Up next, we have the Warriors again, I'm not really expecting a win here, but before we can see the result of this one, we have another trade to look at. This time it's a straight-up move, once again involving Marvin Williams from the Hornets, who the 76ers want to acquire in exchange for Nick Stauskas. And I think we can accept this one, if we look here the 76ers have a projected cap space room of about 80 million dollars next season, so more than enough to swallow the contract of Williams while at the same time extending Joel Embiid, and at the same time the Hornets, while not necessarily getting better, get rid of a bad contract and free up about 14 million dollars of cap space next season. So yes, we can approve of this first trade in the playthrough, and then surprisingly proceed straight to the next one. The Pelicans offer each one Moore and Dante Cunningham for Tali Hewlis and Joe Chi, but this one was fairly easy for me. Moore is already 28 years old and actually worse than Hewlis, who is 7 years younger, and the addition of 30-year-old Dante Cunningham on an expiring contract doesn't really swing this one around. So sorry Pelicans, not interested. So let's proceed with the almost inevitable loss against the Warriors, and after already losing the first quarter by 22 points, the rest of the game didn't really matter all that much. Richardson once again strong with 18 points, Davis with one more of those almost double-doubles, but on the other side 27 by Steph Curry and 24 by Kevin Durant, enough to send us home with a loss. Then as we jump ahead to our game against the Rockets, we can see our scout is ready for his next trip, which means we should now have 8 players fully scouted. And let's just have a real quick look at those and no surprises here, Luka Doncic headlining the class with an overall of 84, followed then by Marvin Bagley and Michael Porter, both hovering around 80. Now of course, once again, these ratings do not necessarily have to be 100% accurate, even the best scout makes some mistakes here and there, but it does give us a very solid first picture. And at the moment, should we in fact get that first overall pick, I'm very strongly leaning towards drafting Doncic. Now the game against the Rockets went surprisingly well up until the fourth quarter, where the Rockets came back and actually were very close to winning this one, but we held on and actually beat one of the top teams in the league. And once again, the man of the match, Josh Richardson, with 27 points and 8 rebounds, followed closely by Mo Harkless, who had 26 and 4. Richardson's performance these last few games earned him a slight minutes increase that I quickly applied off screen, and so let's continue with another trade to approve. This one likely a rebuilding move for Utah, the Jazz looking to acquire Milwaukee's first round pick in 2018, as well as Matthew Dellavedova, in exchange for giving up Alec Burks and Joel Bollomboy. Now, I don't see a protection on this pick, and I don't know if one would be displayed if there was one, but if we assume there is none, then we would likely have to veto this trade. Alec Burke's definitely not a bad player with a 75 overall, but he is already 26 and therefore probably not getting that much better, and he will also get paid over 20 million dollars for the next two seasons, and considering that the Bucks, a team that is battling for a spot in the playoffs at the moment, would lose their backup point guard in this move, all of that on top of giving away an unprotected first round pick, I would say this trade is way too lopsided in favor of the Jazz, and so we sadly have to decline again. Then a close game in Miami ends with a victory and with me accidentally closing the simulation window early. So here's the box score once again on screen. Bryce Johnson with 22 points, 12 rebounds, 3 steals and the block, definitely our man of the match. The Heat also without Hassan Whiteside who's still injured, so things down low were likely a bit easier than usual. Next game against the Clippers and I'd like to take you into this one because it was once again a close one. One and a half minutes to go, we're up by four, but we fail to score on this possession. Instead, we turn over the ball, Teodosic scores on the fast break and gets fouled by Bryce Johnson in the process. Teodosic converts the end one, and all of a sudden we have a one-point game. However, we're able to answer right back, out of the timeout we get the ball to Josh Richardson, who blows by Lou Williams, scores and gets fouled by Blake Griffin. So we counter an and one with an and one of our own and the ball goes back the other way. The Clippers decide to post up Blake Griffin, but Deontay Davis comes up big with the rejection here, and so up by four we now have a two for one scoring opportunity. 
With the shot clock winding down, the Clippers decide to double-team Tyler Eulis. That, however, leaves Bryce Johnson wide open, who nails the mid-range jumper and puts us up six. Back and forth trips to the free throw line follow, and even though Josh Richardson misses his first one here, he converts the second one, and the next guy at the line for the Clippers is DeAndre Jordan, who promptly misses both. And so after two more free throws for Tyler Eulis, the game is out of reach, and we beat the Clippers 112-105. Josh Richardson once again our man of the match with 30 points, 4 rebounds and 2 steals, and he also only missed one single shot from the field in 30 minutes of action. Eulis with 18 and 7 and Johnson with 14 and 8 also some good performances, and with 3 more guys scoring in double digits we more than earned this victory. Then, as we simulate ahead to our next game against the Timberwolves, another trade pops up. Once again involved, Alec Burks, who the Jazz want to trade to the Pistons, in exchange for Ish Smith and Eric Morland. And I don't really have anything against this. In my league, the Pistons are currently chasing the Cavaliers for the crown of the East. Ish Smith would be lost as the backup point guard, but they have Langston Galloway to fill that spot, while the arrival of Alec Burks is definitely an upgrade at the shooting guard over Luke Kennard. By moving Burks, the Jazz would make more room in the rotation for rookie Donovan Mitchell, while at the same time they would clear about $5 million in cap space and acquire a point cut with one more year left on his deal, which might be worth it considering that all three backups of the position are set to expire, especially looking at the injury history of Dante Exum. So, while the trade might be a bit ill-timed for the Jazz, considering that Donovan Mitchell is currently healing from an injury, I still think it's a good move, probably a bit more so for the Pistons, but it's definitely not a move that is so bad that I have to say no. Against the Timberwolves, then, we barely squeeze by, turning the game around in the last few seconds, once again led by none other than Josh Richardson. 31 points sets a new career high in scoring for him, and as you can see here, he was actually fouled on the attempt for the game-winning three-pointer. Missing that one, he went to the free-throw line for three shots, he only made two, but those were enough to seal the deal. So, pretty bad finish here for Taj Gibson, considering that he also got blocked one second earlier, but for us it means a lot because we grabbed our 10th season win. We're now on a four-game win streak, and I would consider Josh Richardson in large parts responsible for that. Over the last six games, he's actually averaging a nice 22 points per game. And remember how in the earlier episodes I said that we don't really have anyone who can score 20 points consistently? Well, we might have just solved that issue. For today, I think we're good to go and can wrap this episode up. In the next one, we will sign a very important contract extension, and depending on our luck with injuries, we might also see the return of Alex Abrines and Kyle Kuzma. As always, if you like this episode, leave a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel and stay up to date on all the latest videos, then feel free to subscribe. And of course, if you have any ideas for moves we could make, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!